Okay. Well, that only took me 10 minutes to get it to, okay, and there we go. Okay, can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, internet safety rules. Okay, so we, we spoke about that last time, right? And uh, I, I spoke to you about, uh, you know, what are the bad guys trying to do? <clears throat> So, well, let, let's go back a step first, because the bad guys now not only use the internet, but they use the phone system as well. So what's, the, what's Jeff's rule number one for phone calls? Anybody? Don't answer calls when you don't recognize the number? If you don't recognize the number, what should you do? Don't answer, the, answer. answer the phone and see who it is, right? No, you said don't. No. no, not at all. If you don't recognize the number, do not answer the phone. That's it. Don't answer. Again, people always say, well, what happens if it's, you know, it's a real call. It's from somebody that you just don't recognize the number. A new doctor or Kroger calling you about a prescription or something. The answer is, if they're a real caller, they'll leave you a message. So I just let it, I just let it roll over to... Uh, to voicemail and as soon as the call stopped i then go look in my voicemail if there's no voicemail you know it was a scam probably or if there's a voicemail you listen to the voicemail and you call them back but be very careful even because these guys have started to even realize that so you may get a call that pretends to be from your bank for example this is a good one they do and so they leave you a message saying this is uh, uh you know wells fargo bank and they don't know whether you are, you know, you bank with Wells Fargo or, you know, SunTrust or Bank of America, whatever, but, you know, they reckon they have a shot at it. Three times out of 10, they'll be right. So let's say you do bank with Wells Fargo. You get a message, well, this is Wells Fargo Bank for fraud department. Please call us immediately on 1-800, blah, blah, blah. Don't call that back, right? Go and check the number either on the website, go to the website, look at wellsfargo.com or bankofamerica.com or suntrust.com or whatever, get the phone number and call them. Same with, you know, this is the IRS calling. You haven't paid your taxes, we're coming to arrest you. We've sent, we've sent the FBI to arrest you. Please call 1-800, you know, scammers are us. Don't call that number because of course, somebody on the other end will answer and say, this is Bank of America, fraud department, or this is the IRS, you know, FBI, you know, arrest department or some nonsense like that. So always make sure you've got the right number. Um, uh, you know, and you, you'll usually be able to determine it. You know, if it says, you know, this is a hospital, you know, Emory Hospital calling and you haven't had any treatments at Emory lately, you're not expecting, you have, don't have any doctors there, it's probably a scam. But if you had some blood tests yesterday at, at Emory or, you know, Dr. Smith or whatever, but then it's probably okay when it says, you know, this is Dr. Smith or this is the Emory Clinic calling to give you your results of your blood test. And that's probably okay. But be very careful because they've become quite smart at that of leaving you fake numbers. They set up their own numbers, 1-800, blah, blah, blah. I had one just the other day pretending to be Bank of America, right? Um, and, you know, obviously, if you don't bank with that bank, then you know for sure it's a scam. But very, very often they will hit the jackpot that yes, you are a Bank of America customer or you are a SunTrust customer or you know the IRS. Obviously, nobody wants to get into trouble with the IRS or the police. Um, uh, you know, I've had plenty of these. You know, I, I had one just today and I'm gonna show you some of these from Apple. Now, I don't even, you know, don't bother with mostly with Apple, but it said, you know, somebody's trying to get into your account. So we've, we've suspended your Apple account. You can't do anything anymore with your iPhone or your iPad. You know, please click on this link and we'll help you out. Well, obviously they're not gonna help you out. My example always was what your mommy told you ladies when you were a little girl is don't get in a car with a stranger, right? And as soon as you click on the link, you're getting in the car with a stranger. So there we are, rule number one, never ever click on a link in an email, any email, even if it looks real, right? Don't click on the link. Uh, always follow it up yourself and figure out, you know, by calling the real 800 number, which you can get off the back of your credit card, or you go online to www.irs.gov 
and see um, you know, what the real number is for the IRS and you call them and you say, did you send this email to me? And 99 times out of 100, the answer is going to be no, because nobody does that. Bank of America doesn't do that. Wells Fargo doesn't do that. SunTrust doesn't do that. No banks do that, right? Of sending you emails saying we've suspended your account or somebody's trying to break into your account. So we've locked your account out and all this kind of nonsense. They've come up with brilliant, brilliant, brilliant ideas that make our hair get on fire. That's what they want you to do is to become anxious. And they know particularly that, you know, we retirees, older people, we get anxious easily, right? You know, somebody's kidnapped your granddaughter. Oh my God. You know, in most cases, it's garbage, okay? So rule number one, never ever click on an email. Rule number two, well, we'll come to rule number two, but rule number one is never, never, never stop yourself before you click or, or press your finger on your phone. Pressing, pressing on the link on your phone is the same as clicking the link. No legitimate organization sends you click a link in an email, or they shouldn't. I've had some from real organizations, and shame on them because they shouldn't be doing that. Not, but typically Microsoft, Google, your bank, the IRS, Amazon, Facebook, none of them are going to send you an email saying, you know, there's something wrong with your account. Click here and we'll, we'll fix it. If it's an email uh, which has a link in it, which is something you can click, they're trying to fish you. That's called phishing. Fish spelt with a PH. And phishing means you are the prey. They're, they're dangling bait in front of you. And once they get into your computer, then you can say goodbye to your pocketbook. They will figure out your, your credit card numbers and your bank account numbers, anything else that might be there, don't let them in. So I was having this conversation at the beginning. Uh, you know, somebody said, why do I have this thing set up where I have to admit each person into this session? Because I have some level of control there. There've been lots of scammers and crooks and just people jumping in on these Zoom calls and cursing and making trouble. So every time somebody wants to come in, I get a message here. It says, so-and-so comes in. I look at it. Do I recognize the name? If so, I just have to press the button and let them in. If not, get lost, right? They can, you know, go somewhere else. So wh whatever control we can have, uh, we, we should take. And <clears throat> remember the, the rule that I said, you know, clicking on a link is like, you know, turning off your burglar alarm and leaving the front door open and going out for a whole day. Well, the chances are when you get back, somebody's got into your apartment or your house and stolen your TV set or, you know, stolen your jewelry or whatever. And, you know, shame on you for letting them in. So remember what I said again, I showed you my phone. And I said, nobody can get into this phone. Nobody, not the IR, not the, uh, the CIA, not the FBI. Nobody can get into my phone or my computer or my tablet, my, my iPad or my Android tablet unless I let them in the door. So don't let them in the door, right? And there's the fishing picture. You know, you, that, they call it fishing with a PH, but it's really somebody in that, behind that computer is fishing and look where they're going, right into your pocketbook. They would want to get access to your, um, to your asset. So, you know, uh, here's one that I got. Hi, Jeff Kalvaruski. So they sort of know my name. And if you look, you'll see the Jeff Kalvaruski is underlined and it's in blue. That means it's a link. Usually means it's a link. And also, uh, they say as a valued Walmart shopper, we're going to give you 50 bucks, blah, 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 complete the survey, provide feedback here. And again, you can see provide Walmart feedback, Walmart feedback here is in blue. Um, and so you they can put links into pictures or, or diagrams like that. So this will take me, it will click you click on the link, it'll take me to the survey, I fill it out and I'm going to get 50 bucks. Well, in real life, you ain't getting nothing, right? If it's too good to be true, if it seems to be good to be true, it usually is too good to be true. So notice how clever this is. First of all, I, didn't sh I can't show it on the whole thing, but elsewhere they had the Walmart logo. So it looks like it came from Walmart. The fact that I'm not a Walmart customer, or I haven't been to Walmart in six months, doesn't matter, right? Uh, you know, they know that, you know, Five people out of 10 or whatever have shopped at Walmart. So you're going to think, gee, I shopped at Walmart. They're being very nice. 50 bucks is 50 bucks. No, you're not going to get 50 bucks and you are going to get a big surprise, right? But notice that they've got an unsubscribe button. So you click on that. Now, the original idea for the unsubscribe was exactly what it suggested. If somebody is sending you advertising and you say un unsubscribe, 
they're supposed to take you off the, off the list. And most honest companies will do that. If Microsoft is sending you ads and you don't want to see them, or Walmart's in, the real Walmart is sending you ads, they'll take you off the list. But of course, the scammers are obviously not going to take you off the list. Just like when you answer the phone and you don't recognize the number, you are telling the bad guys that this is a good number. This is a good phone number. They don't know which numbers are good and which numbers are bad. They're just trying them all, starting at one and two and three and four. 404, they'll try and 678 and 770. They'll try them all. If they got a computer that can spend the whole day trying numbers. So m most of them are, are bad numbers. They haven't been allocated by AT&T or Verizon or whoever, right? But when yours answers, even if, you, even if you don't talk to them, if you hang up, they know right away, aha, this is a good number. And so you're likely to get more of this junk and not less. Same here, if you click on the unsubscribe, these are bad guys. So you think they're going to take you off their list? No, no more than the mafia is going to take you off their list if they've decided they want to rob your business or, you know, rob you while you're walking in the street. Of course not. So they've got an unsubscribe. All that is is just another link to their site. So they've got two cars that you could get into, that the little girl can get into. And then again, to make it even better, down at the bottom, it says another unsubscribe. Click here or email. Email, and then they say, send email to, and then they give you a physical address. Well, how the heck can you send an email to a physical address to 6312 Southwest Capital Highway, Portland, Oregon? I actually once went and looked this up, and there's no such address, right? But for most people, you look at this and you say, aha, it's my lucky day. I've got plenty of time. I'm retired, or right now I'm stuck at home. Click on the link, answer a few stupid questions about Walmart, and I get 50 bucks. Nope. You ain't getting 50 bucks. Thank Jeff. You. Yes. Jeff, I don't know about everyone else, but I actually got this same one too. Get a, this a, one. A <laughs> gift card. Yeah, a gift card. Well, and I started the process of, you know, you just fill out this information about, you know, just take a survey. And I right. started, and then it went on. I realized, okay, this is fake. They're not going to give this me This is anything. bad. Exactly. Because, uh, you know, often I when. I started to get right. well, they, they, you know, they, they, they want to. They, they will do, I'll explain to you in a, in a few minutes, but I'll, I'll jump ahead now. They want to do one of two things. They either want you to log into to your, let's say your Bank of America account, they give you a fake page that looks like Bank of America or SunTrust Bank or whatever, and you key in your ID, your account number and your password or whatever. And of course, now they got your, your account number and your password. And in about five minutes, your bank oh, account's yeah. going to be a little, little will have a, have a little less in that it had before when you started. Or like here, if you maybe this one, if you go to that website and it's going to ask you, you know, fake question, basically what they're doing is they're downloading software onto your computer that ain't going to do you any good, right? So better not to go there. So again, I say, remember, we spoke about the header. So nobody ever looks at the headers, right? That's like, you know, the, you know, the nice guy comes up in the car and offers the little girl a candy and get in the car. And she doesn't even notice what kind of car it is or what the guy looks like. You know, she just gets in. Well, that's pretty, not a good thing to do, right? Same here. People don't look at the header. In fact, these guys are so certain that you're not going to look at the header that they don't even bother to disguise the header, which they can do. So look here. This is a, um, an email purporting to be a, um, um, a survey. But let's look at the header. It comes from, look at the first line. Shipping status. What? What's, what's shipping status? I'm not shipping anything. But that, you know, we know that between the two inverted commas can be anything, but already it's junk, right? They obviously use this for some other scam with a shipping status. Then between the, 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 the two arrows here, we, we have the name of the person or the department, the at sign, and then where it came from. So the name of the person or the department is garbage, you know, generated by a computer. That's already a giveaway. At namecheap.com. Well, I have no idea what the heck namecheap.com is, but it sure ain't Walmart, right? Then the subject says Walmart with a lower case W already. That's already a giveaway. Watch for the bad grammar and the spelling error. Your award number, this might have arrived. But that doesn't make any sense. It's not a reward. This is asking me to do a survey. So you can see it's all kind of junk, right? Absolute rubbish. <clears throat> so, you know, again, provide feedback. If you click here on the, on the provide Walmart feedback, you'll go somewhere. And if you click here down below where it says to unsubscribe or the unsubscribe in the middle, you know, you're going to go somewhere on the internet, right? 
So first of all, we've got this name cheap.com, which makes no sense. And that's already a giveaway. Here's another one, right? And I've got hundreds of them. <clears throat> Every day they're coming up with something new. So this one says, it's got the Facebook logo. I'm not even on Facebook. As you know, I tell all my students, get the heck off Facebook. It's very dangerous. It's not a good place for a senior to be. And there are plenty of bad guys trolling it all the time. Either, you know, to get hold of young girls for bad reasons or to scam old people for equally bad reasons. Facebook, although it's a great idea for keeping in contact with your family and your friends and so on, has become a cesspool, become a, a dangerous place to be. It's like, you know, a dark area downtown at midnight when there's nobody around. You, you don't want to be walking there by yourself. That says, hi, Jeff, it looks like you're having trouble logging into Facebook. Just click a button below and we'll log you in. Gee, that's so nice of them, so it says I. Again, I know right away it's junk because I don't have a Facebook account anymore, but nine people out of 10 probably do have a Facebook account these days. So, uh, you know, yeah, I did have some trouble yesterday getting in. That's because I typed my password incorrectly. And look how nice Facebook is. They're going to get me back on. Well, how can they get me back on if there's something wrong with my account? right? We've got to fix that. All I've got to do here is just click on it. That doesn't make any sense at all, right? It's like saying your bank account is overdrawn. You've spent too much money. Just click here and we'll fix it. Nah, it doesn't work that way, right? You've got to put money back in the bank account if you've got an overdraft, right? So, uh, and again, very cleverly, look how psychologically clever they are. If you weren't trying to log in, let us know. And you can see let us know is in blue, not underlined, but it's in blue, which means you could click there. Oh, well, this isn't me. This is a mistake. I'll click on that link and I'll tell Facebook they got the wrong person. Well, of course, you know that both of them are going to go exactly in the same direction, right? Which is to the bad guy. But as always, we look at the header. We look at the head of the email. So it says from ah, Facebook. That sounds good. Then we look between there. Security. Ah, the department is security. They're security. Well, that sounds right. At facebookmail.com. Well, that sounds nearly right, doesn't it? But it doesn't say facebook.com. It says facebookmail.com. See how clever they are? They set up an address that is nearly Facebook. See? Carefully faked from address, right? Facebook mail is not the same as Facebook, right? And they do that all the time. But, you know, they find some sleazy internet service provider in Russia or somewhere which will allow them to set up an account with a very similar name to Microsoft or Google or Facebook. I've seen Microsoft with two Fs and, and Google spelled G-O-G-O-O-G-E-L, right? Instead of G-O-O-G-L-E. Very, very similar. They set up these accounts and then they use that to, uh, to, to scam you. So obviously this ain't going to work. And you can see down below it says this message was sent to and there's my email address. Well, what the heck would they tell me that for? I know that they send it to me. You can see my email address in the two line. So that makes no sense either. You see that, you know, these guys are very smart in one respect, but they're also often very stupid in other respects. So these things don't make, they don't make sense at all. But most of us, most people, 99% of people, I think, don't bother to put on their thinking caps, right? They've got their eyes closed. So when the nice man says, little girl, get in my car, he has a candy. The little girl closes her eyes, takes the candy and get in the car with eyes tightly closed. Not a good idea, right? Not a good idea. Keep your eyes open all the time. Keep your thinking cap on. Does this make sense, right? And, and you know, a little, little thought will tell you that this doesn't make any sense at all. Okay? But look at this one. Equifax breach. This came out literally, remember, a couple of years ago two, three years ago, Equifax here in Atlanta got breached and they lost all of our information, 143 million people's information, which is every one of us, because they got all your credit information, where you work, how you pay your bills, what salary you earn, all of, they know everything about you. And these idiots at Equifax, and I would say that to them in court, that they're a bunch of idiots, lost it which is like your doctor taking off the long, wrong leg. You know, you go to hospital to have an operation on your left leg and they amputate your right leg. Uh, you would not be too happy about that. The doctors are incompetent. Same here with Equifax. So the bad guys figured out that's a great idea. Equifax breach. Notice in big letters, in capital letters, right? And notice here, free credit click. 
get your credit score. So this, this, this colored section here, which says free credit click, obviously they're expecting you just to click on it and you'll go and get your free credit scores. That sounds so nice of them, right? Very thoughtful of them. Let's look at it. From, let's look at the header. From, your score check. Okay, that sounds good. At, so the, the, the less than sign, contact, that doesn't mean very much, but it, okay, maybe it's right. At, and then gobbledygook, blah, 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 A-O-L-E-A -E dot U-S. I have no idea what that email address is, but is it Equifax? Of course not, right? You can see some total garbage. But most people are just going to look at the first few words. Your score check, that sounds good, right? But, you know, th those first few words can mean anything you like. They, 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 they can put anything they like in there. And they very carefully think about these things. But most of them don't bother with the, the last part, the email address, because they know you're not going to look at it, right? And why would they go to the trouble of setting up many different email addresses? Remember, I showed you uh, in my, my spam email, I had dozens of offers, great offers from apparently different companies, all coming from the same email address. You know, the same company that does insurance and, and siding on houses and dieting and all kinds of stuff. Obviously, all scams put together by guys sitting in in an internet cafe in Nigeria or Ghana, those are two big places that the scams come from, uh, or Kyrgyzstan or Russia, or, you know, all these lawless places where the FBI is never going to catch them, right? So, you know, that tells me that's it, right? It's not a good thing and I should get out of there. Uh, question, now, if you get that email, first of all, when you see this, you know, when you see the title, just the title in your email, can you click on it and read the email? And the answer to that is yes, you can. That doesn't do anything. Just reading the email doesn't do anything. But be very, 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 very careful. Once you've opened the email, do not click. Remember, never, never, never click on anything in the email. So what should you do now? Now that you've opened it and you've decided it's garbage, what should we do? And the answer is very simple. You remember in the days of Nancy Reagan, she was going out to drugs and her slogan was just say no to drugs. So Jeff's slogan is just say delete. Just hit the delete button and the, the email goes into your junk bin, into your trash can. And, you know, at the end of the month or every month or two, you can just delete everything that's in the trash can and it's gone. So no problem about deleting it, no problem about reading it, but don't click on anything anything that's in the email at all don't click on the unsubscribe don't click on the you know the special offer and so on and so forth so let's see who's the target here so this one says emergency medical help yes something guys wearing on his wrist and he press a button and you get you know the ambulance comes the 911 comes uh, uh you know if you've fallen in the, in, in 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 your apartment and you can't get up or something like that E-medical alert sounds a great name with the, you know, the, the medical symbol next to it. And all you have to do is press that little picture there. You see, it says, get started here. Um, and, you know, you'll get the best medical alerts. But again, let's have a look at it. Let's look at, at the, you know, the, 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 the header never lies. And yet people don't look at the header. So this header says that it comes from medical alerts. Okay, that sounds all right. But we know that those first few words, whether they're in inverted commas or not, can be anything you like. Let's look inside. Again, notice contact, same as the previous one, at garbage, A-O-L-E-A -E dot U-S. So there's all this garbage in front, A-C and numbers and blah, blah, blah. And at the back, A-O-L-E-A -E dot U-S. Well, again, it's exactly the same company that just tried to sell me about Equifax, do you remember? So, uh, you know, notice the subject, help for loved ones stay safe with the new medical alert system, okay? And so, yep, who they who they're targeting here? This is obviously going after us as seniors because seniors would be interested in that. Or possibly, you know, your children or your grandchildren who might click on this because they think, gee, mom or grandma or grandpa should have one of these things, right? And then they're gonna get they're going to get compromised. They're going to get uh, the bad guys into their computer. Here's another one. <clears throat> okay, this is an interesting one. From a support team at indiana.edu. Indiana 
So Indiana is the name of a university. Edu is an is, is Edu is an education organization, usually a university. Uh, blah blah blah. Dear email subscriber, this email is to form all of our Indiana.edu users that we're maintaining and upgrading our website in a couple of days from now. As a subscriber, you are required, notice the word, you are required to send us your email account, right? And notice, up, maintaining and upgrading our website. Again, it's all technical gobbledygook, nonsense, doesn't mean anything, right? You're required to send us this information. Look down below, your username, your password, and your date of birth. Well, you know, if they're upgrading their email system, why do they need my password? They know the password, right? That's how I log in. So your, your ISP, whether it's Gmail or whatever, why would they ask you for the password? It doesn't make any sense, right? But people get fooled by all this fancy sounding language. Failure to do this will immediately render your email address deactivated from our database. Complete and total garbage, right? You know, that's like, uh, uh, you know, let's say you drive a Ford and you get a letter from Ford that says, if you don't call us back, your car will stop working tomorrow. Well, you say, what are you talking about? What's, what nonsense is that? And it's exactly the same as this. Complete nonsense. Don't make any sense. But the objective of it, the goal of it is to get you to be worried. Failure to do this will render your email address deactivated from our database. You know, don't make any sense. But people get scared. Here's a sneaky scam. I like this one. <clears throat> well, I don't like it, but I think it's very clever. From Order update at Amazon.com, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So that looks like it's Amazon.com, but it's not. Notice it's between the two inverted commas. And remember I told you that can be anything. That could say Fred or Jeff or order department or whatever. And then next we've got order dash update at Amazon dot, 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 dot. Now that dot, 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 dot means there's not enough space on the page to put the rest of it in. So they've been very clever. They've arranged it so that it, it right, literally stops showing you what it, what it says at the, at the word Amazon. But coming behind it is probably something like amazonscam.com, right? It's not amazon.com, otherwise you would see the .com here, right? The fact that you see amazon.com on the left doesn't mean anything because that's just made up, right? And then it says your order has been canceled. For your reference, here's a summary. You canceled order this, placed on that, blah, 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 blah. Thank you for visiting Amazon.com. All of great. You might say to yourself, I don't remember making that order. And what would be the logical thing to do? Notice the underlined number. The natural thing anybody will do is click on that number to see what this order is. It must be a mistake. And I need to tell Amazon they've made a mistake. Well, of course, that, that, order number which you can click on ain't going to Amazon, right? If you click on it, it's going to take you to, you know, Scammers or Us or somewhere else on the internet, right? And again, I looked at this as it placed on September, the 20th. this was a couple of years ago already. I don't remember canceling any order. And by the way, it's some book, right? A third edition by Client Scott. I don't know what the heck this is, but I didn't order it. Don't click on it, right? Don't click on the link right? It's not going to be a good thing at all. And again, all of this we get from just looking at the header. Notice looking at the header is very, very simple. So I'm going to show you in a, in a few minutes <clears throat> how to figure out where this actually goes, right? So this is like a sort of an 800 number. You know, when you call an 800 number, you don't know where the 800 number is. It could be anywhere in the country. It could be in Kansas, it could be in California. In many cases, when you call an 800 number for tech support, it's in India or somewhere, right? But it's still an 800 number, right? So this is gonna tell you, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, how to figure out where this actually goes. But in fact, this link here goes to the following URL, the following internet address. Forget about the HTTP slash slash, that doesn't matter. It goes to www.lshoes.ru. That's the website that it goes to, right? Well, first of all, that ain't Amazon. That's for sure. Second of all, I have no idea what L shoes is. Left shoes? Long shoes? I don't know. I have no idea. And who knows what the .ru stands for at the back? It doesn't say .com. It says .ru. 
Well, email addresses can either have just like .com or .edu or whatever, or they can also have the country, right? So in this case, it's the country. And .ru happens to be, you can figure it out, Russia, right? So there's some website called L Shoes. I have no idea what that means. And it's in Russia. Well, do you actually want to go when you click on this link to some website that you know nothing about in Russia? And you know already they're pretending to be Amazon. So of course, we now know 100% sure this is a scam and they're trying to um, you know, reel you in. They're trying to fish you, right? Notice, so this is very clever. It doesn't tell you to click on this link. But the natural thing psychologically I would do, anybody would do, is say, I don't remember this. Let me click on this link. But of course, this link is not going to order number 138-8645, et cetera, at Amazon. This link is going to www.lshoes.ru. And once you get into that car and you go with a nice man, I don't know where you're going to land up, but it probably ain't going to be good. Right? Here's another one from Earthlink Alert. Uh huh. That sounds bad because I'm with Earthlink. And it comes from support at earthlink.net. Uh oh. Now, I look at the header. What do I see on line two? On the second line, I see two, and it's all blank, right? How can the two line be blank, right? Well, the answer is very simple. The way you get a blank two line is you put all the, you put the, 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 the person's email address that you're sending it to, one or more people, in the BCC line, the blank, the, the, the blind copy. Remember from the, from the old days on, when we still had carbon paper, CC was carbon copy, meaning a copy, a copy would go to those people. BCC is a blind copy. So this means this email has been sent to, you know, many more than one person, not just me. It's been sent to a whole lot of people. But because it's in the BCC, I can't see who it went to. Again, whenever I get an email and there's no to address, unless it's a cartoon or something that someone's sending me, be very, very careful. So first of all, they've got the Earthlink logo. That sounds cool. That's really easy to do to steal from the website to make a copy. Dear subscriber, Due to security measures, notice space, comma, and no space, so already bad writing, we have suspended your Earthlink account. Notice the bad, the bad grammar. Notice all the words are in where the first letter is capitalized. Well, nobody writes like that in English. Due to 10 invalid attempts to access your account from Nigeria, no period at the end, right? We have suspended your account. Bad English. What the hell's it got to do with me? Why are they suspending my account? Because people are trying to get into my account from Nigeria, right? Doesn't make any sense. Your account information has been deleted from our database for security reasons, right? So first line says we have suspended your account. The next line says, yeah, we've deleted you from the database. Don't even, not even consistent. Doesn't make sense. Now, we need you to confirm your identity by clicking on the link below. Notice in 24 hours. Aha, you know that. They're putting pressure on me. I've got to do it now. Don't, do, don't wait till tomorrow. You'll forget. Do it now. Click here to unlock your account. Well, that makes no sense. If they've, unlocked, they've locked my account, why would just clicking on it unlock the account, right? And so, no, delete or disregard this message if you have access your account from Nigeria. Well, I'm not accessing my account from Nigeria, so that's another mind game they're playing with me, right? Another mind game. And notice the bad English, the capital letters, uh, you know, th th this note is all in caps, which nobody writes in. And all of it is capital letters. E each word is capitalized like they don't understand English. You can see the bad English, clearly uh, a, a, a complete scam. But they've managed to give us what looks like a real, um, a real address of Earthlink uh, support, right? But you know, again, First thing you look at this, remember what I said, keep your thinking cap on. Don't suspend belief. Obviously, this is garbage. Okay? Notice all this kind of stuff. And then the punchline, of course, they want you to click. And again, if you follow that link, you will see it doesn't go to Earthlink. It's going to go to somewhere. And I call this the strange English Nigerilish. And sometimes it's Chinglish, you know, Chinese English. It's, it's obviously written by somebody who doesn't understand the English language, who's not fluent in English, and therefore it's your scammer sitting in his 
in his, his internet cafe in Nigeria when you're probably Nigerian. Notice this year, they, they, you know, they've got a sense of humor. Somebody's trying to ac access your account from Nigeria. Well, that is true. These guys are going to try to get into your account from Nigeria. Look at this one. Warning. Notice my name in huge letters because, you know, that's going to get my attention. Is your, neighbor, your neighborhood safe? You're receiving this email because there may be a risk of sex offender activity in your area. Oh my God, I've got small children. I've got, I've got grandchildren, you know, uh, 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 you know blah, 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 blah. And notice again, it doesn't actually ask you to do anything, but it does say click here or down below. I understand and want to proceed. It sounds so nice, right? Very serious. So we look at the header again. We, we're now getting smart at this. And it comes from sex offender alert kids liar kids live safe that sounds good but then we look as we always do between the the, the two le, le, the less than and the greater than sign and we see first of all garbage seven e n m four x l i rubbish that's already a giveaway that it's junk at and then half the name is gone thompson r e u and the rest of the name isn't there right but we'll see more in a second that address here if you look at this, this ad address from, notice most of it is not printed because it's too long. But I can show you, again, I'll show you how to do it either later to, in this session or in the next session. This goes to 7EMM4XLI at ThomsonReuters.com. Now, Thomson Reuters is a legitimate company. It's, it's in the news business, right? They're, 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 they give news to the newspapers and the, and the news media. Should be legit. But in fact, what it really means is that Thomson Reuters, this company, has probably been hacked. Somebody in the company clicked on a link, it infected their computers, and now it's sending out to you know, thousands or millions of these garbage messages, and one of them somehow they got to me. How do they get my email address? Notice in the two line, it's addressed to me. It doesn't say my name. It just shows my email address, which means I don't really know who I am. But, you know, yeah, they've extracted on the next line my first and last name from that. And that's why it's probably a good idea, although for most people it's too late, is not to have your name and your email address. Use something else, right? Call yourself cool guy or, you know, beautiful lady or whatever you like, right? It's anything else so people can't figure out what your actual, actual name is. I mean, I've had this email address for too long, but I've got other email addresses with Gmail where I don't give away my name, right, at all. So whoever gets it, I can usually tell they have no idea who I am because they can't get it out of the email address, right? The link address, the one where you, you click here, either please click here or understand and want to proceed, this goes to http colon slash slash, don't worry about that, trafficconception.au2.com. I have no idea what the heck that is, but it sure as heck hasn't got anything to do with you know, sexual predators or any kind of warning that I'm getting, right? So again, it doesn't make sense. Here's another classic one. You've probably all received something like this. American Express, notice we've got the logo on the right for your security. Card member, suspended user. Oh my God, I'm suspended. Account ending, and there's no number there. So they don't really know my Amex account if I have one. Dear member, we received a request to deactivate your card account. This has been processed and completed. The card has been deactivated, blah, 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 right? To restore your account, click the link below, right? So somebody closed my account. Oh, my goodness, right? My hair's on fire. Uh, my American Express has been closed down or your Visa card or whatever it might be, right? Well, of course, if you notice carefully, they don't have... Uh, my member name, they don't have my account number, the last four digits, they have nothing, right? It's basically just an email with a click here and the click here immediately tells us, okay, there's something wrong. You will not be able to use your card anymore after 48 hours. But right here it says your, the card has been deactivated. So what's this 48 hours? The card's dead already. So that, again, doesn't make sense, right? Click on the link, the old switcheroo. So they go from all this bull story to, of course, get back in action, just click on the link. And now you know what's coming next, right? I'm going to look at the header. And this is a really interesting one. Remember the previous one? This one says, comes from American Express Alert. Well, that sounds good. 
but inside here is the email address support at earthling.net it's the same as the one before do you remember that again no two name in the two line to in the two line there's no name same same as before so it's the same bunch of scammers just using a different message they they hit you with the old one too if they get you with the right you go down if they hit you with the left you go down right the thing is to step away from the guys they can hit you with the left or the right right these two guys the, 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 these are two totally different emails but yet with the same fake email address supported earthling.net and subject warning american express credit card decline but the email has got nothing to do with me declining an email i mean a declining an american express card the email says that I requested or somebody requested to deactivate my car, right? And, uh, you know, of course, it doesn't make any sense at all. If you just think about it, it makes no sense at all. And, of course, again, I'll show you how to do it in a moment. How do you restore? It says if you click here, this goes to ow.ly slash blah, 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 junk. Well, of course, that is an American Express. I don't know what it is, but it ain't American Express. Okay, so again, you know, just be a little careful. And I love this one. Uh, my personal favorite, Jeff Kalvariski, you have a new sweetheart. Start your free trial, right? Oh my goodness, you know, the young girls out there who want to get married. Well, you know, complete nonsense, of course. Again, look where it comes from. Victoria Brides. Ah, that sounds cool. Inside the, 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 the less than and the greater than sign, the two arrows garbage at nidoo.in so nidoo and i do i have no idea what that is that's the name of a company but it means nothing to anybody dot in and again we have a country code and of course uh the country code in this case is in is india and by clicking on this link start your free trial you know and get all kinds of free dates look at that you know beautiful young woman but this link actually goes to profbuilder.com and then a whole lot of garbage so i don't know what profbuilder.com is but it sure ain't anywhere that i want to go and that i even know about it actually turns out that profbuilder is a legitimate website it's for um professional programmers pro professional software builder prof builder and they've obviously got hacked and now their servers are being used at night to send out all this garbage to me right and to you and to everybody else that they can and of course, these guys, they buy up lists of email addresses. So your email address is on, you know, on dozens of these bad guys lists. And there's nothing much you can do about it. Any questions at this point? Have I completely bamboozled everybody? Or do you get to see what I'm driving at? Anybody? Yeah, we, we see what you're driving at. Okay. You see the... It's actually quite straightforward, is it not? But most people don't bother about it. But on mine, I get, instead of this from line here, it'll just have like initials or something. Like everybody has initials now. And it doesn't really say. Well, it's not the, it's not and the I don't know if that's that, just my particular. Program. Yeah, you got to look, always look after the at sign. So what's in front of the at sign, they can put X, Y, Z or anything they like. After the at sign is what tells you what we call the domain. The domain, like my domain for my email address is earthlink.net. It's an ISP. Your domain might be aol.com or gmail.com. That's called a domain. That's kind of where it comes from. What might, if you got a, a confirmation from Amazon that you bought some stuff, it would come from something at amazon.com. As soon as it has an at gobbledygook that doesn't make sense right that's mm -hmm. when you know that it's a scam see that look at this one yeah health check blood clot filters ah you know this something blood filter may shift in your veins causing damage oh my god i could have damage in my vein click here to learn more how nice of them right how nice of them but you know click here if you if you uh just look at this address here it it's hard to read i'm going to make it a little bigger now that's the address it's going to i'll make it just a little bigger there it is it's going to forget about the http colon slash slash 
qiil.ga. Who knows what .ga is? <laughs> it is actually Georgia, but it's not our Georgia. That's the country Georgia, which is somewhere in Russia, in Eastern Europe, right? Well, and then the rest of it is complete gobbledygook, right? So you can see yeah, it's email, going to an address that had nothing to do with blood clot filters or anything. It's a scam, right? And they just want you to click or tap to follow this link. So email, did I'm, you want to ask Jeff something? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Email. Huh? No. I didn't say anything. Say again. Okay. I, said, I didn't say anything. I, I saw you had taken your um, mute off, so I thought you wanted to say something. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to carry on. How do you see where this goes? So it, let, let's go back a, a little bit. Uh, okay. So now this is what you normally see, right? Okay. And it says, uns let's go back one more. Right. Unsubscribe here. How do I see where that actually goes? So here's the rule. Just hover your cursor over the link. So if you move your cursor with your mouse, and you put it over the link, you, the arrow points to the link. Don't click. Do not click. Just move your cursor there and um, you will actually see the address. And there it is. See, that? see how it is? I put my cursor on unsubscribe here and I got this little box that popped up that probably a little hard to, to, to read, but it came from qiibkdtz.ga. Whatever that is, I don't want to go there, right? I don't know who it is or what it is. I'm a little girl and I ain't getting in a nice man's car. Like your mommy said, don't get in the car, run away. And so here, don't click on it, delete this email. It's garbage. It's a phishing attempt. It's trying to um, get you to uh, go to their website. And there it is. You can see this website. You have no idea what this is, but it sure as heck ain't good. Okay. And so uh, let, let's see one more. Uh, now this one comes from Amazon. Oh my goodness. Dear customer, notice the Amazon logo. For your security, we locked your account. Why would they do that? This is required when something about your signing activity changes, like signing in from a new device or a new location. So if I sign in from a new device, I get a new phone number. Um, uh, I mean a new phone or I get a new iPad or something. They're going to lock my account out? That doesn't make any sense at all, right? And of course, very helpfully, to unlock your account, just click on the link below. Well, if it's that easy to unlock, why do they lock it in the first place, right? Well, if they <laughs> lock my account, it should be for good reason. It actually happened to me this week. My wife got a text at 2 o'clock in the morning from our bank saying, there's somebody who's just used your credit card at 2 o'clock in the morning for a small purchase like 80 cents. And we know that they do that when they're trying to see if the card is a good card, right? You know, they might go buy 80 cents of gas at some gas station in the middle of nowhere, but the banks are picking it up really, really fast now. Of course, it's a scam. They got hold of my credit card, right? Uh, but that's a real call from the bank. It's a real number. And basically, you know, they, they instantly uh, take action, which is to cancel the credit card. They're gonna send me a new one. Yeah, here, all you got to do is just click on it. Well, that doesn't make any sense, right? If, they, if it's that easy to unlock, why did they lock it in the first place? But like I always said, what do we do? We don't believe anything. We go and we look at the sender's address, the header. And it says it comes from Amazon. Oh, that sounds good, but we know that's junk. So we look between the two arrows and it comes from BTAF, garbage, 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 at Amazon.pt. Well, that's Amazon, is it not? No, it isn't. That's <laughs> Amazon.pt. It's not Amazon.com. I have no idea what Amazon.pt is, but I ain't going there because not Amazon.com, right? Again, PT is a country code. Uh, I'm not sure what country it is. It doesn't even matter. But I deal with Amazon in the United States. So why am I getting a message from Amazon, you know, wherever PT is, Portugal or whatever it might be, I don't care, right? And notice here, it says verification needed. This is the, the subject line uh, and, and, and some number, right? This message was sent with high importance. Well, of course it's high important. They want me to click on it so that I, they, <laughs> they can steal my money, right? So again, 
it's kind of obvious as soon as you look at you know where it's coming from right it doesn't make any sense the fact that it says amazon doesn't mean anything but it comes from amazon.pt very close but not close enough and again this link takes me to billionhealth.com i don't know about you but i don't know what billionhealth.com is followed by a whole lot of garbage right um they want me to click on the link and go to their website so the nice man is offering me a candy to get in his car and he'll give me a ride to school and maybe it's not going to turn out the way i want it to do and here's another one that's we're getting a lot of these now these days you know everybody's at home online company <laughs> companies looking for home workers well i've got plenty of time i'm stuck at home maybe i can do some work online and earn you know 20 bucks an hour or something better than nothing uh, all you have to do is click here and you can be rich yeah we're going to pay you 20 an hour 50 an hour we'll pay you 300 dollars an hour right don't cost them anything because we know as usual that this is a fake um, if you can't read or see this email it says on the top line click here or down at the bottom click here you can see they want you to click and this comes from r.mydailymoment.info slash and then a lot of junk what is r.mydailymoment.info having the vaguest <laughs> idea right having the vaguest idea but i know for sure it's probably not a good one right any thoughts on that you guys seen these kind of emails right i'm sure you get them every single day in most cases when you look at your list of emails you can often pick them out right away by the by the subject and they just delete them right so i look at my emails every day i press on the little button that that basically checks all of them and then if there's the odd one that i really do want to read i uncheck it and then i hit the delete button and of the 100 emails 95 are gone and then i can look at the five that may or may not be real even some of those five could be garbage right they've just disguised it well but don't waste your time reading this stuff right because the temptation to click is too great whether it's on your phone or on your tablet or on your on your computer the the the, the, the temptation to click is too great and basically once you click you are toast talk about one more thing <clears throat> and then we can kind of end the, the scammers have another trick up their sleeves right so just as you can attach a file to an email so when i send you an email when i send you the the material for this class for those of you who have sent me the email and i've sent you the material there was an attachment you just had to click on the attachment don't click i said earlier but you were expecting an email from me so it's okay to click on it if you are expecting an email from a specific person, that's fine. You're expecting to hear from your doctor or from me or from, you know, your daughter, you can click on the email. But even if you get an email from your daughter or your son and you weren't expecting it and it says, you know, he has some pictures, don't click on it if you weren't expecting it. Send them a separate email saying, did you send this to me or call them up on the phone? Because then very often what happens is they got hacked. So your friend got hacked or your daughter got hacked. And now that slimy software that has been put on their computer is sending out more of this junk to everybody in their contact list, right? But in addition to a file, you can attach a PDF, you can attach photographs, PDFs. So when I send you the material, it would be in a PDF format, which stands for personal data format. And it's a very good format because it can't be manipulated. It could be a Word document, it could be an Excel spreadsheet, any other file type, it could be a video, but most important, it could include a program, software. So using a compromised email account, possibly your friend or family member, they send fake emails to contacts of that first victim. It could also be a link to a doc on a Google Drive in the cloud. So that's very often. People, I've had uh, the kind of thing that says, uh, you need to sign this document click here and it's it's a google doc in the cloud well the google doc has been crafted to cause chaos it's got software in it that you don't want to have so again the rule is never ever click on a link or an attachment unless you know for sure that you're expecting it so if i send you the link that says uh, yeah, the 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 the, the, uh, the 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 pdf so my pdf to you will be something like security for seniors dot pdf that you can click on 
without worrying about because you're expecting it from me. You sent me the email, you, you're expecting it. Uh, if, if you just get an email from me out of the blue and it's got a, uh, an MS Word document attached and it says, hi, uh, from Jeff, please read this document. Well, don't do that, right? Because that, if you weren't expecting it, it could well mean that I've been hacked and the, the garbage software is sending it out, sending its copies of itself out to everybody in my contact list, which might include you guys, okay? So, you, you know, all of this stuff can be attached, as I said. Uh, last point then, somebody asked me, and I've included that now, what if I do accidentally click? Somebody said, oh my God, you know, I, I clicked on the unsubscribe, and they thought, oh, what have I just done? Well, in, in real life, there's really not much you can do about it because, uh, you know, senior moments are us, we make mistakes. But, you know, the, 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 the downloading of software or the doing of whatever bad stuff they do happens in seconds, right? So unless you're really, really, really fast, there's not much you can do, okay? So the first thing you can do if you don't have any protective software is close your computer down. Just close the, close the lid, which will shut it down. Uh, once the computer shuts down, there's nothing that their bad software can do. But don't start the computer up again because immediately the bad software will do whatever it's designed to do, which is not good. So if you did accidentally click on a link, um, then you can call me and we could take a look at it or you could take it to somebody like Best Buy. Somebody who knows what they're doing needs to look at it and get rid of that bad software before it starts looking through your emails and finding your credit card numbers and doing bad stuff, right? Um, so uh, either you, you shut it down, right? So that's a good thing. Just turn it off or close, close the laptop or uh, 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 power down your, your iPad or your phone. If it's your phone, then just power it down. You know, there's nothing that they can do if, if the phone is not running. But if it does happen, uh, basically what you really need in the background is some software that's on your side. And there are many good packages out there. Uh, McAfee and all of these kind of guys are good. But the one that I like best is called Malwarebytes, right? It's, it's a free program. Uh, it, it, it's known to be okay. It's known to be good. It doesn't um, do anything bad. And it sits in the background watching what you're doing all the time, but in a good sense. It's not watching, you know, who you're talking to or which websites you're going to. It's watching for you're linking to a bad website and it keeps a list of millions of these bad websites and um, uh, it, it will immediately stop it. So if you accidentally do click, Malwarebytes will stop it. Windows itself as well, the operating system, has now got a lot of this built, built into Windows. But uh, I find Malwarebytes is a really good one to have in the background. And you can click on Malwarebytes from time to time, once a week, twice a month and let it run a scan on your whole computer. And it will look at everything on your computer. It will kind of be like going to the, the doctor and having blood work. It will check out everything. And if it finds any weird stuff has managed to get itself onto the computer, uh, it will delete it. But again, if you follow my rules of not clicking on links, you will 99.9% .9 of the time find out that malware bites will come up and say, I didn't find anything. Your, your computer is fine like going to the doctor, they do the blood tests and you don't have any problems, which is a good result, right? Same here. So <clears throat> uh, last point, and then we can break. Uh, go to malwarebytes.com, right? And there, there are versions for Windows, there are versions for uh, Android phones, and I think there are versions for Apple phones as well. And all you've got to do is click on the free download. But what did I just say? Click on the free download, didn't? Didn't I say my rule was never, ever, ever click on a link? Well, the reason why you can do that is you went to malwarebytes.com. You went there. You know you're at a good site. I'm telling you, based on all the evidence, I know that malwarebytes.com is a good site. It doesn't do anything bad. Um, they sell, you know, the basic version, which is free, does a pretty good job. And then you can pay a few dollars a month to get their more advanced version if you wish. But you went there. So you are perfectly safe to press the free download and then download the software. It's guaranteed to have, as best we can know, 
it's guaranteed not to have any bad stuff in it. So it's just a piece of software that sits there and watches out. They call it antivirus, but it's more powerful than that today, of just looking at funny things that might be going on on your computer. And if it detects any funny things going on on your computer, like for example, you clicked on one of those fake links. Again, not every, it's not perfect because the bad guys are mutating and improving their techniques all the time. But at least nine times out of 10 malware bytes will stop it. And it'll say to you, eh, eh, eh. you know, you're going to a bad website and it won't allow you to go there, right? It'll, 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 it'll grab you as you're getting into the nice man's car, you're right? Superman arrives and Superman grabs a little girl and takes her away and doesn't allow her to get into the bad guy's car. This malware bites is your Superman or Batman is going to come in and save you from, you know, your own stupidity, let's say. <laughs> So it installs the software, it takes a few minutes, and you're safe from, I don't say all attacks, but most attacks, right? And then Malwarebytes from time to time will update itself. So as they learn about new garbage, it will update itself and by and large protect you. Okay, I think we're done for the day. Uh, any questions? Yes, um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I have Norton through Xfinity. Is that the same thing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pretty much. Um, the only difference is, you know, Norton costs money and you can get malware bytes for free, but they also have a paid version. But the free version does a pretty good job, right? Um, I'm, I'm a cheapskate. I've got the free version, right? Uh, but Norton, McAfee, all of those are perfectly fine, except that they cost you money. Well, um, Xfinity gave us Norton. Say again? Xfinity, Comcast gave me Norton. Gave you Norton for free. Well, then it's fine. Yeah. You know, it's perfectly good then. It's a good product as well. And at least, you know, it's not guaranteed to work every time, but it's better than nothing, right? It's like locking your front door. And you know, if you lock the door, it doesn't mean somebody can break into your house, but you just made it a little harder. Or if you lock your car, you know, don't leave your car at the gas station with the keys in running while you run in to get a cup of coffee. You're just making it easier for the bad guys. Lock your car, then go get the coffee, then come back. They could still steal your car, but you've made it harder for them to do. So antivirus is kind of like locking your car, locking your front door. It's, it's not guaranteed yeah. that it will stop everything, but it pretty much most times will, will, will stop the bad guys. Email. I have Xfinity also. Have you had this service for a long time or was it just an introductory kind of a thing or? No, I, I've had it for almost, uh, almost nine months now. I had it once before though years ago, Comcast, through Comcast. Yeah, Comcast. Yeah, I have that. I didn't know they have that service. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, if you want, just go online to them, you know, to Comcast.com or right. Xfinity.com, whichever one you've got, and you'll probably find somewhere there, you know, Free, free antivirus software. Oh. But like I say, Malware Bytes does exactly the same thing. Same thing, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't make any money. Got, uh, I'm, not, I'm not recommending you get it because I get any commission. In fact, there's no commission because it's free or well, the basic version is free. I like the free uh, You can part. pay for a version. So, you know, today we find there's a lot of good free stuff out there that, you know, I feel sorry for the guys who make their living out of it. Like, Norton and McAfee and so on, but if I can get it for free, why? Why not? You know, why why pay for it if if, if somebody would give it to you for free? So malware by it. There are others as well. Um, you know, I don't have hold anything particularly for malware by it, but I've had it for many years now and it works great. It updates itself every couple of weeks. You'll see uh, you know, it'll 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 do the update, you don't have to do anything. And the update then is now making it more stronger and stronger and stronger mm -hmm. as they find more and more of the bad guys out there. So if you don't have one already, you can either go online, as I said, to comcast.com and there's probably some link or just go to malwarebytes.com and download it. Right. And it's probably a good idea to have an antivirus, even though today Windows is taking over most of that. So Windows already is checking, right? Mm -hmm. So it really means you're going to have two guys checking what's going on. But, you know, your computers today are so fast. In the old days, that could make it really slow when two guys were checking everything. But now your computer, your tablet, your phone, they're all so fast. do not make any difference if you've got one or you've got two. So let, win let Windows do the job or, or, or iOS on your Apple phone do the job or Android uh, on, your, on your Android phone do the job. 
But Malwarebytes is just adding another dimension and I find it very, very good. And at least once a month, I then run Malwarebytes. You click on the link for Malwarebytes on your computer. It will pop up and say, do you want me to run a scan? You say, yeah, run a scan. You can go away and have a cup of coffee. It takes five, 10 minutes and it looks at everything on your computer. It, it really does all the blood work, right? At checking out your computer's kidneys, heart, liver, everything. And it comes back and it says, I found two bad files, but I've quarantined them, right? It puts them in quarantine, means they can't do any harm. And then you can delete them or it says, I didn't find anything, right? And uh, it's been a very, very long time since my Malwarebytes has ever found anything in my computer. Not because I'm smarter than everybody else, but because I followed the same rules that I told you guys about. Don't click on links. Clicking is deadly dangerous. Anything more? If you have, if you have, and you're too embarrassed to say, and don't be embarrassed because everybody does it, you have clicked on a link or you have clicked on that, you know, unsubscribe here or something, it's probably a good idea. Install Malwarebytes. It will find it if there's any bad stuff on there or contact me and I can take a look at your computer for you. It's not that hard to get rid of the stuff, right? Believe it or not, it's not that hard, but you have to take action because otherwise that bad stuff can sit on your computer for a long time using your computer to send itself out and scam other people. Right? You, don't want it, you don't want that to happen if you can help. It's wasting your computer, wasting your network, and uh, they're using it to scam me, right? Your computer might, I might get an email from one of you guys. I say, oh gee, I know this person. He or she is a student of mine at, at Benson. Well, let me click on the link and see what they got. And kapow, you know, something goes wrong. And it wasn't you sending the link or sending the, 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 the clickable link. It was software on your computer, which is sending it. So it's coming from your computer, but it's not coming from you. <coughs> even though it pretends to be an email from you. Jeff, this is Delta Dear, Sandra. I have Hi a there. question about, I have a Lenovo computer and it keeps popping up trying to update um, drivers. And I just close it out. I mean, and if you open it up, which I have done one time, it wanted some money to update uh, the drivers. Uh, that is, that is probably a Huh? That is probably a scam. So you need to, um, you know, within Windows, if you go to the Windows um, control panel, there will be an option there to uninstall programs. Okay. So if you go to the control panel, one of the options is uninstall programs. And if you click on that, it'll show you all the programs you've got on a computer, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and a hundred other programs. And one of them will be this thing, whatever it might be, driver update or whatever it's called. And okay. You just Uninstall the sucker. If you if you can't get it to work, just send me an email and I'll be happy to try. Yeah. You see, that's another thing that, that happens sometimes is they download Did stuff on the your game? computer that keeps Thank nagging you. you to pay them money, right? But uh -huh. it's probably probably a scam. It may be a real one, but you want to get rid of it anyway. And it's probably a scam, right? So you will Because we pay really don't money. need all those drivers that's trying to update. What are these drivers? Well, maybe you don't, they don't need updating, right? Yeah, you, you have drivers, but most of the drivers automatically update themselves. A driver is just a, some kind of special technical program you need that, you know, sitting down below in the engine room, right? You don't, but they, are, they, they will generally update themselves. And most okay. times if your drivers are out of date, it isn't going to make any difference anyway, right? You okay. won't notice the difference. So okay. um, the chances are that they will ask you for money, you will pay them money, and either they will do nothing, which means your you know, $79 is wasted, or worse, they'll take your $79 and put some bad software on your computer. So you know, okay. no, no good guys operate like that. Only the bad guys operate like that, right? No okay. good guys will you know, send you these scammy messages telling you you've got to do this, and by the way, you've got to fix it. And it's going to cost you $79 or something. No, the good guys don't work like that. So okay. find, you, you use the uninstall. And again, if you can't get it, you can't figure it out. Give me a shout. I'll show you how to do it. And then once we find the program, you say uninstall and it's gone. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Anything else? Okay. Great. Thanks very much. I'll stay on the line for a little bit.
Um, but uh, I, uh, uh, you know, the, the, essentially we're, we're done. I have a question too, but this relates to the class that's on Thursday about the uh, settings that we were doing on our phones. Is that yeah. okay? Uh, when, when do we use the cellular data? When should that be on or, or should it be left off all the time? That cellular uh, data well, budding in, in uh, settings. Yeah, the cellular data uh, um, it kind of allows you when, when you don't have internet, uh, let's say let's say you're out somewhere you, and you don't have internet connection. You're somewhere in you know in the middle of nowhere, um, and then you want to go to a website. So you you know you type in www.amazon.com. It will switch to the cellular network to the phone network, and allow you to go there. Um, the only difference between that and actually having internet. So that's a useful feature. Um, is if you don't have an unlimited data plan then they start clocking up data, right? So if you don't have the unlimited data, that's one way the phone companies, you know, get to charge you extra. So if you only have a limited amount of data, um, you know, you might now, if you use that a lot, you might run out of data and then they're going to start charging you. But most people, most plans today have unlimited data, so it doesn't matter. In which case the, uh, the cellular is a useful thing because it means even though we don't, you're not, you don't have access to internet, maybe you're sitting in your car somewhere or you're at my house and you, I don't have internet and you don't have internet, you can still go to amazon.com or, or cnn.com or whatever you like to go. Uh, it will just switch to the, the phone network. So essentially your phone has access to two different networks. I don't know why we have all these different technologies, but we do. So the, the, the older network called the cellular is the phone, which is those towers you see around, you know, sticking up on buildings and on lo large poles. That's the phone network. And then the uh, internet network, the, the um, TCP IP it's called network, um, runs separately and that's, that's using your, that uses the internet, which you pay separately for. So you have to pay the, the phone company for your phone, and be able to use the phone, then you pay them separately uh, to have internet access. Um, so basically they brought the two together so that if you don't have internet, you can use the phone network. And it's actually possible, of course, to make phone calls on the internet without using your cellular. So, uh, you know, if I make international calls, I do it on something like WhatsApp, which does it for free, instead of making a phone call, which costs you, you know, X dollars a minute. Okay. Thank you. My great pleasure. Uh, Does location on that phone use your data? If you're using, if you have location on, does it use your data? Uh, no, it, it will use the internet first. It should use the internet first. Okay. <clears throat> well, if there are no more questions, I am going to end the session. Uh, again, my usual reminder, send me an email at jeff underscore calvariski at earthlink.net if you haven't already done it, and I will send you this material. You'll get the actual slides that I've been showing you. And you can use that for your own edification or to make notes on or whatever you like. Right? Just send me the, the, the email and it will be my pleasure to uh, send you the slide. You will probably get a message saying you're not allowed to send email to Jeff because, of course, being paranoid, I've got a higher level of security in my email. But don't worry, I'll get a message saying that and I'll just allow you in, read your email and then oh, respond yeah. to you. Have a good day, everybody. Okay. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a great week.